Hi, in this video, I want to go through the fold study task. This is an exercise we do in class based on an exam question from GL4 uh, 2003 uh, on the old WJC specification. Okay, let's have a look at the questions. We've got a partially completed block diagram of folded beds. Uh, and we're told it's plunging towards the north. First job we need to do uh, is to complete that table uh, to describe the different elements of that fold. A fairly straightforward uh, exercise, but one you just need to be a little bit careful with, um, particularly in terms of the, the measurements. Once you've done that, complete the rest of the the block diagram. Where would these grey beds uh, be outcropping on the surface, which would be the map view, and also the cross-sectional view uh, on the right-hand side? Think carefully about the information that you, you've been given already about this. The second part of the question looks at um, these spherical structures that we might find uh, in the hinge area of a fold. You're asked to draw in what those uh, shapes would look like um, after these beds have been folded. And crucially then, to annotate that diagram to explain your answers. Now to help understand this, um, let's see how uh, we can model this using Play-Doh. If we use a piece of Play-Doh to model the behaviour of a bed that's been folded, we can see quite clearly how it will deform. But if we want to think about the stress that different parts of this bed uh, are subject to, we need to perhaps think of something within the bed of a known shape, a known form, to see how that deforms. So within a bed, we might see structures, for example, like fossils, where we know their shape. In this Play-Doh example, we can make some holes. Circular in shape, we know the shape that these start as. If I now fold this bed, how have those shapes changed? And what does that tell us about the stress that different parts of this bed are actually undergoing? Okay, having seen that demonstration, press pause now and have a go at those uh, questions uh, on the sheet. Okay then, let's have a look at some answers. The first part of the question was to complete the table to describe the different elements of these folds. First question is asking you for the amplitude. We can see there that the um, wave height is shown as 12 meters. Now the amplitude as a result will be half that. Remember amplitude is only half the wave height. The, for the wave length, we can see there we have a distance from uh, an anticlinal hinge to a synclinal hinge as 20 meters. But for wavelength, we always measure for, between similar hinges. So from uh, an anticline to anticline or syncline to syncline. As a result, the wavelength must be 40 meters. Finally, the hinge shape is angular. 
we can see that the, there's a quite a sharp bend in these uh, in these rocks at the hinge. We're also told that the axial plane attitude is upright, um, and also that these uh, folds are plunging uh, in a northerly direction. Now that helps us when we're filling in the rest of this uh, block diagram. This is the uh, map pattern that we should have seen. On the surface there, we can see we've got a V pattern. Because that, on the left-hand side, that fold is uh, an anticline, that V will close in the direction of plunge. For the fold on the, on the right, we've got a, a syncline. That fold then opens in the direction of plunge. And on the right-hand side there, we can see that the uh, that bed is dipping off to the north. It's plunging away uh, to the north. Okay. The marks for that, you'll see uh, you have a mark for showing the beds closing with the anticline. have a mark with them connecting with the top surfaces uh, of the um, cross-section, and a mark for showing the plunge to the north. For the second part of the question, then, you asked to draw sketches in these spaces. Let's just fill those in. So at point X, the, um, the circle is stretched into a, a, an oval shape parallel to the bedding surface uh, because we have tension at the top of a bed uh, in an antiformal hinge. At Z, then, we'll also see an oval, but this one is at right angles uh, to the bedding surface because at the bottom of the bed in an antiform, we get compression. So, to conclude, we must use all the information that's available and think about the stresses that are acting on these rocks if we're going to be able to fully interpret the um, folds that we're studying. It's important to know uh, the different components of a fold, to remember, for example, the difference between wavelength and amplitude, but also to think carefully about uh, the stress that creates these folds. If you have any questions, ask me in class. I'll see you then.